catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com. Africa Tech Radio. You're listening. 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 To Cruise Control. Yes, guys, welcome to Cruise Control with Buki. And of course, it's time where I can switch now and talk to my guest. Like I said before, my guest wears so many hats. And he's a lover of hats. <laughs> and he has done a lot of things in the tech eco space. He has moved through different positions. And of course, he has helped brands and products move in the market. But I won't be the one to, you know, raise his flag. I'll give him the space to toot his horn. And of course, tell us what he does. Hi, Scott. Hi, Vicky. Hi, it's good afternoon. Good to be here. Good to have you on the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me. And you said so many nice things about me, and I was thinking, who is she talking about? <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about you reading through your bio, and I'm like, how do I introduce this man? I can't have enough words for it. So, I mean, it would be an honor for you to introduce yourself to us. Okay, cool. My name is Scott. I'm a product leader. I currently serve as a product manager, senior product manager with Hack. Hack is a post-purchase CX company based in the U.S. And it kind of shows my passion for customer-centric products because through my entire product career, I've actually been building customer-centric products. Before that, I worked with Corsite, a research company also based in the, in the U.S. And my focus was building a customer interactive platform. And before that, I worked with Centricity, also another customer-centric company. We were working on predicting customer behaviors for retail companies to understand what products to, you know, focus on part-time based on what people were looking for. It would help them make decisions on how to, you know, push their product into the market. So I think everything I've done, no matter how much I would want to list them, I would just say I'm a product leader who focuses on customer-centric products. Absolutely interesting. In general, I termed your designation as a tech expert because you've done a lot of work that if we give you from now till the end of today you definitely have a long list to mention but we're glad to have you on the show and of course it's uh, wonderful to have this conversation with you today talking about uh, potentials in the tech ecosystem and how people can build on that but before we kick off my full conversation i like to just put people a bit on the spot but not so serious so don't think don't get uptight and like what's she about to ask me now i just like to ask random question are you ready three random questions before uh-huh. me. yeah all right that's scary but shoot <laughs> <laughs> don't get worried it's something easy i'm sure i'm just trying to get into your headspace and feel welcomed also i already welcomed you into my space is that okay Definitely, please. Okay. Go ahead. So my first question would be, what's your unpopular opinion about technology? That's an interesting question. Yeah. I, I think my general opinion about technology is, I think it's a culture. I think it's a way that we relate with one another. And everything that technology is about is about improving that. Improving our lives, improving our, our relationships, how we communicate, how we interact with one another, how we interact with the world around us. So my, my general opinion about technology is like culture. Okay. Uh, so my next question is, what's your favorite number? That's easy. <laughs> my favorite number is seven. Why seven? <laughs> seven sounds very significant. Okay. So interestingly, I think I, I just ended up loving the number seven because I grew up as a church boy. And oh, every time seven, we hallelujah. Pray, seven, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> seven, amen. <laughs> Don't yeah, mind I me. just... It kind of stuck, you know. When you say hallelujah seven times, amen seven times, mm. you just go, I really love seven. Seven and that's is just perfection. So, I have no idea why that is. <laughs> because like, I mean, even even on the menu too. list, it's called item seven. <laughs> right? right. So I think that could be a good reason. Yeah, that that's reason the reason for me. <laughs> because when, okay, I, so when okay, I hear seven, I look for that. that. Yeah. So my last question, which is the third one, is going to be, what is a smart technology that you're currently obsessed with? Artificial intelligence. I have been obsessed with AIs since before they became popular, since 2004, when I first learned about them on Mm -hmm. Scene Network. And 2004 was, I don't know, I think over almost 20 years ago. Mm. Almost 20 years ago, maybe. Yeah. Wow, 19 years now. 19 years ago, yeah. yeah. So I've been obsessed with AI since then. 
and I think I, I, I first came across it on a tech show called Computer Network, and they used to have it on TV run back then, and they would show you different technology, and artificial intelligence was like just making the way, and people didn't really think it made sense. So like I've been excited about it, and all of the companies I've worked with have actually worked around artificial intelligence. So now that it's becoming popular, I'm happy to say that an almost two decade of obsession to finally get it. So yeah. That's a good obsession. That's a I don't even know. Since I've been hearing about obsession, that's the longest years of obsession I've heard about. Nineteen years. Wow. You'll be surprised. <laughs> I even tried building one, I think about ten years ago. I failed twice. It's been crazy to eat. That's how much I love it. Okay, we can kick off so, this conversation starting with the term failure. Because when you look at the tech ecosystem, a lot of startups and a lot of builders, innovations and ideas have gone down in the drain without hopes of rising. How does failure feel like? And what do you think about people whose ideas or products are failed over time? Okay, so I would start with myself. I actually have a book on failure where I highlighted 10 decisions I made that led to one of the biggest failed experience I had, where I started a company, I got funded, and my money and a couple of people put in money, and this was a very long time ago. And it was the first time I was saying 22 million for the first time, you know, and I had raised 22 million and put that all of it into my business with all of what I had, and it failed. And it kind of led me to the pressure. And it was, it was a crazy season, right? So, for me, I think failure is part of the process. What I even highlighted in one of my books was failure is the beginning of your journey to success. It's how you know that you are working towards something. So when I see products that start and fail, first off, I give kudos to the people who actually attempted to do something. Secondly, I hope that they learned from it because that's what failure really is. It's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to see how not to do something, you know? So yeah, I think that's my view on failure. As for many products that fail today, in, in the end, I think being responsible is a very key part. So for me, it's, I would always say the decisions you made kind of led up to it. And it's okay that you made bad decisions. We all make bad decisions every once in a while, right? So owning that, saying, yes, I made this decision, I did certain things that led to this failure, I think that's like, that's the best part of any person building a product and they experience failure. Once they can own it, they know they made this decision. They know what decisions to make the next time. And, you know, yeah, I, I think I should stop there. I said what I think about failure. I hope that answers the question. I mean, experience, they say, is the best teacher. But those people who get to experience those things becomes the greatest teacher in our environment. That's why you can actually speak boldly on that. So I, I, who am I to just interrupt you? Share your knowledge while you can. <laughs> might save somebody the stress of going through the process of failure and giving up. So about looking at Africa in general, the pool of mm -hmm. talent and startup entrepreneur spirit has kind of widened. And of course, people are now tapping into this potential and looking to do one or two things. But then we have challenges in our environment that stops people. Was this part of the reason why you failed? And how can this be best managed? The answer is yes and no. The society actually influences a lot of things that happen, right? But in the end, how much research did I really do, if I'm being honest? You know, because knowing where you're building matters, right? Mm -hmm. If I had probably spent more time understanding my environment, I would have made better decisions, you know? I talked about diving into AI 10 years ago. Yeah, that was actually what we did. We, we invested all that money trying to build an artificial intelligence for managing customer experience, right? Mm -hmm. So you could shop better. You could have a machine sort of help you with your shopping list. So you never have to go, I need to buy this. The machine will be sent to your bank account. And then, you know, every time you have a shopping list, you just write it into the machine. The machine will look at when you have money, manage how much you have, and then try to buy the stuff for you. That, that was our goal. Well, at the time we were building it, not very many people were using smartphones. Heck, not very many people understood something as simple as Facebook. And we're building that type of stuff for the Nigerian market. It was ridiculous when you think about it now, right? So, yes, the society had a part to play, but how much of the market did I study? How much of the market did I research on? So, I, I think that's something that is critical. As for the echo space with a lot of startups, I am very excited that everyone is like jumping into it. 
but like it's good to dive in and know what you're doing i think a lot of people who like personally that i've spoken to that mm-hmm. want to start up something they are more excited about the idea of being the ceo of you know it's, it's fun to be introduced as the founder and ceo of xyz company right the guy who builds that up it, it sounds cool but not, not very many people understand what's really behind this also i i tell people see that the the term ceo is just title you can earn it without even building or, or being the founder of anything you could be employed as a ceo right it's, it's really just title but because people are so like driven by that idea of being the one right that built something everyone is jumping into it and as much as i'm happy that we are all like trying to do something we need to understand our why we need to be honest about our why we need to do the research that comes with what we want to do you know and then we can really tell a if our environment is ready b if we ourselves are ready and c if our products that we are trying to build is actually ready you know all of those three things would influence the echo space we see companies that get funded every other day and we, we just I, I, someone once reached out to me and said man people are just getting money for coming up with simple ideas i could just do this too and go get funding i'm like this, that's the problem right and that's why after a while it's gonna fall or, or you're gonna fall or you you might go through a process that you might not recover from because it could be very lonely to start building something i mean there's a so having all at the top yes it's very I, I like I, I i know this it's very lonely it's very sad it could be very painful I, i i spent almost a year in depression and when i say depression like i was literally in my pajamas for three months on the same couch for three months i wasn't getting up it was that bad you know i wasn't talking to anyone because i lost everything at that point so like not very many people can actually handle that and i handled it because i had people it wasn't because i did it on my own some people were really pushing to help me through it so I, i think the point is having all the variables and all the information necessary would help and mm. it could really help our echo space beyond what our society can influence from what you said i could hear you talking about people who are moving and deciding they want to be a startup owner or ceo of a, of a product or a brand or a company and you're actually having words for them but then when we look at the reality lately you notice most people are also switching career into the tech space as the ecosystem seems to be opening up for players and developing their skills and talent and of course there's a growing pool of VCs who are looking to invest in ideas also but one interesting thing i got from your book which is titled overrated is you talked about how this switch is called transition economy instead i want to know why you came up with that and of course the the reason behind all of this and what you want people to look out for when switching their career to tech okay cool so yeah the book something overrated and that very title on transition was mm-hmm. more of the phase we're in now right almost everyone i've talked to want to learn something in technology And that's because, you know, there are more job opportunities now in that space than ever before. Growing up, if you were asked what you wanted to be, you would want to be a doctor. My very first jack of all. (laughs) You know, thank you. I don't know how many people know about jam listening on this, but my very first jam, I chose medicine and surgery. There were a lot of us that wanted to be doctors, you know. And then other people wanted to be lawyers. And I don't know if, like, I don't know this kind of space you were in, but Mm. growing up, if you got admission, and someone asked you what you were studying and you said something like LIS or arts mm. or like a- any other stuff they would look at you like oh how sad you didn't pass jam you know the proof that you passed jam was that you were studying medicine or law or something but you see, over time things have changed now people are realizing that's not the basis anymore and you know with technology the skill is more important than the degree The degree is a door opener, so that's not a way of saying it doesn't matter. But the skill is more important, and people believe it's easy to just acquire a skill if you're willing to learn. That's what's happening now. However, what my book really focuses on is there's a pressure that has come with it. You know, people are being made to feel like if you're not transitioning, you'll be lost or you'll be left behind. And yes, technology is going to cover everything. That's true. But you see, technology is vast. There's medical technology. There's pharma tech. You know. There's market tech. There is, there, believe it or not, there's technology in, in furniture, in fashion, 
you know but somehow we've been so caught up in a very limited idea of technology and now we've put so much pressure that if you're not learning software engineering or maybe you don't have the capacity to learn how to code i've heard people say oh i want to learn product management because you don't have to code right and people are jumping in for that reason i feel like all of those reasons would would hinder how much impact you can make even after you transition so what my book focuses on is trying to reduce the pressure that like you don't you don't have to do it just because people are doing it look for something you like about you, you know something you like if you you like fashion and you understand that technology is going to take the future how can you infuse that technology in fashion then go for it it doesn't have to be programming a computer or an artificial intelligence or a software or a mobile app you know it could be just something that improves how people make fashion decisions you know it could be something that improves how clothes are made and you know tech is not all about there's software tech there's hardware tech there's comp- there, there's so there are so many aspects of technology and as long as you are catching up with that and doing something you care about then transition is good but not just jumping in because you think it's the only way it's it's not the only way so i think that's what my book focuses on all right so for me i believe that a lot of people especially nigerians who don't really have so much passion to build a product switching careers to maybe become product managers or have one role that they have to play towards pushing a product or a brand which i think is all based on the fact that you can earn more your earning potential increases when you move into the tech space and all of that and when we look at earning powers you look you talk of nft crypto and all of that so in advising a fashion stylist to actually look into that is a great one because not so many people know that they can earn money from maybe trading their concept or their art idea so it's not just for the geeks and the nerd am i am i right I, are you following me yes you're very right in fact like when you, when you mentioned like designers putting their stuff just to avoid mentioning names the company i used to work for kind of did something with a major fashion brand in the us and one of the things they were focused on doing was bringing some of their designers to make out outfits and rather than run it on the runway they were sold as nfts these guys didn't really need to know much about technology but they design they draw stuff and they move that into the market and they sold and it was beautiful and all of a sudden they are a fashion tech company right without really doing so much in technology or knowing so much about technology they leverage on available technology and i think that's what our space needs to really look at you talked about the earning power mm-hmm. and yes now yes right but let's also not forget that just a couple of weeks ago we faced one of the greatest layoff seasons ever you know in technology yeah. where big tech was laying off people small tech were laying off people because everyone is trying to hold their own and it wasn't just nigeria it was global from the crypto market down to the web 2 market it was everywhere so there's that balance right so as much as you want to do it to earn you also want to do it for value you also want to do it for posterity for your own preservation as well for you know for the future of what you care about if you if you have all of those things and then you're earning good thank goodness right but like i i know someone who left the country he he got a job with one of the big 3 social medias and he left the country and he was one of the people that was laid off he was laid off a few days to his wedding right and when he reached out to me my first fear was how does he plan to sustain himself in that country because it, it's it's more expensive outside some of the time right it was more expensive where he was for sure it's more expensive to host a wedding outside it's more expensive to do a lot of stuff outside and here he was now back in the market seeking a job when he was like earning so much you know what, what that tells you is everywhere can be unstable but if you're doing something you care about then you can weather it So I, I think that's what I just like to put that there. Like it has to be something you care about. I like the fact that we get to be talking about earning because a lot of people these days see tech as a shortcut to earning more money. And of course when people are on social media these days everyone is termed an influencer as long as you can garner a good number. And in your book you said social media is not the whole internet. The internet is in the whole tech space. Uh can you help us break what that means because this social media has helped a lot of people to earn money and people are looking at ways they can actually improve on their talents and skills to earn more. But you tend to take it the other way and tell us that social media is not the whole internet. So what do you have to say about yes, that? Yes. Yes. 
yeah, so I, I can picture a lot of my friends who are actual influencers getting angry with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the truth though. Social media is not all of the internet, to be honest, right? Social media is, it is what it is. It's, it's a type of media that allows social interactions. And it, it means there are other form of interactions that can happen on the internet, right? For example, one of the big three, Microsoft, is, is not like a social enterprise. And we know that, you know, it's a software-based company that manufactures operating systems, which many of your social media applications are dependent on, right? It tells you that there is more. There are other spaces you can leverage on. So I'm not saying that you should leave social media or not care about it. It's in markets because where people are is where the market is. You can take advantage of that. You can take advantage of the fact that there are so many people to learn from, so many people to sell to, so many people to buy from. That's good. But the dependency that if you are not an influencer, you would not thrive in tech, that's completely wrong. And it's a, it's a bias. You know, it's, it's like saying this thing where I, I grew up watching people like Rambo and James Bond and Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? The, as, the assumption growing up was, you know, you had to be jacked to be strong, to protect people, to protect your family. Mm-hmm. You had to, you know, be able to hold like two ammunition. You get. But like, I have a family now and I am not jacked if you've seen me. <laughs> and I know I would do anything to protect my family, mm-hmm. right? But you see, the, the assumption was that was what you needed to be, to be a man. Because that was what the media showed me growing up, right? But you see, it's, it's just one side of it. They didn't tell me that Arnold needed to work for a living and provide for his family. They didn't tell me that Arnold needed to attend his school, his child recital, you know, or go to the child's karate event. All of those things are not like things you see about parenting. The assumption is you have a wife, you, like, I don't know how many Arnold movies you saw, but he has a wife, someone comes to try to take the wife and then he throws out a couple of guns and he defeats an entire army and boom, he's the hero. You know, like that's what social media is. It's just one side of it. And there, there are like so many sides to it. You know, there are so many sides to the internet. And I said the internet is not all of technology because there's hardware tech. You know, a lot of us are trying to buy a particular brand of computer or a particular brand of phone. And it is not even related to the internet. It's a hardware device. Do you know how much they pay the guys who build these machines? You know, do you know how much they pay the guys who build the OS? It's not internet based. It's not internet focused or internet dependent. So it tells you that there is more to technology outside this. Bless you. There are people being paid to build machines for surgery, right? Like, so your medical practitioners are dependent on those machines. It is not internet based. You don't see it on social media. You don't see it on the internet. But someone is making machines that can save your life. Someone is making machines that, that, you know, would remove a tumor. Someone is making machines that, you know, can help you with maths. You, you get and it's not internet dependent so this tells you that there's so much more in tech right yeah. and it is not all on the internet so even if you want to go into tech you don't have to tell yourself until i'm an influencer on social media i have not done it or i have not done well let me add this some of the most successful people financially people earning a lot right in technology are not social media related right mm. and this is not to say people in social media are not making money that's that's not true they're making a lot of money especially those that can utilize it I'm just saying there's so much more outside it. I mean, That's it. For, from what I get is there's so much more that you can do away from social media. Because when you look out, let's go and talk about depression because you talked about it earlier on. But that was from the angle of failure. Depression also, people get depressed from seeing their mates or friends or people they know doing one or two things that they are posting on social media and of course fellow startup builders are also seeing their friends raising funds and feeling left behind and getting into and sinking basically not even getting sinking into that deep depression because they feel it's not happening for them what have you got to say to people like that okay so i like sharing from experiences i woke up one morning and i went on linkedin right i love linkedin and I went on LinkedIn and I saw a friend of mine who's an engineer. Apparently, she was in a team, the co-founder of a team that just got funding. And it, it made the news. And I saw her picture, you know. And we, we had both just been laid off on another company we were working for, a U.S. company. This was a couple of years ago. So, actually, just last year, not so long ago. So, I saw, I saw her picture. And the first thing I said was, oh, my goodness, she raised this much money? And then I checked the product and I was like, oh, my goodness, is this product? It's something we could have done easy right and i was like maybe i should also do the same thing so i understand that pressure of, of coming online and seeing people do stuff and it could be it could be depressing sometimes 
what was funny was I was her boss. So picture that that <laughs> at some point someone who worked for you has just raised a lot of money. <laughs> so like it, it could be insane, right? It could be really insane. But in the end, we all have our different journeys. For me, you know, after the very first few moments, because we're a huge friend, the first few moments of thinking, oh my goodness, what was I doing with my life when people were building stuff? What am I doing? Well, I'm just gonna be working and someone, you know, after that passed. I was like, wait, I now have someone who knows what it is to raise funds in the global market. And I now know someone who has done it and succeeded. This is my opportunity to learn. Ask questions. What did you do? How did you go through it? So it became an opportunity to learn and it kind of reduced the pressure because when I heard what she had to do, I knew then and there, there that I did not have the capacity at that time. Like honesty hit me. Like what? You had to do this? No, I can't do this. I can I can't stay up this long. I can like accepting all of those things humbled me and calmed me in a way, right? And I understood mm. that it was hard journey. She's been doing she's been pursuing that same thing while we're all working for years. It took a long time for it to happen. And even though it looked like an overnight success, it wasn't really, right? Mm. And I think that's what I would say to anyone who is like looking at social media. Right, some of it they say is fake, yes, but a lot of it these days aren't because you can verify almost everything now, right? And people are really doing stuff for real. In the end, it's their journey. Yeah. What's your journey like? What, where has life taken you? Where Where are you coming from? You know, just follow your path. It, it doesn't mean you should be like you should relax and say, well, it's not my time. I'm gonna wait now. It's not gonna happen like that. But it should inspire you rather than trouble you. And it's not easy, right? I, because I know how it feels. But if you remember that, especially if you do have your own plan, you do have your own goal. If you can remember that and let that drive you, you'll be fine. Your time will come. You know, I think that's all I can say. That your time will come. <laughs> I'm sure that will be something that will ring in the mind of people who are actually battling depression right now. Hopefully, they will be able to find their way out of it by reminiscing on what you just said. I think I have about two more questions to go. Sorry, this was supposed to be for 30 minutes, but I'm just having so much fun talking to you and getting to learn from you. So the book you wrote, can you give us an overview of what the book is all about? And of course, how people can get hold of this book? Okay, so something very good is the one I just pushed out and it's on seller. So that's that's free advertising. <laughs> Stella. So you can get you can get something very good from Stella. And the book is really it's for anyone who is struggling with where they are right now, especially when it comes to we just talked about depression. You know, if you're in a place where you're asking yourself, "Am I doing well enough?" We we you know the, the jackpot thing hits a couple of months ago, right? Mm. And everyone I I was really close to in tech was traveling or making travel plans. And it was easy because a lot of us were working for foreign companies, so it was easy to just move out, you know. And one of the biggest pressure was people asking, "Guy, when are you gonna move out? Are you gonna stay here? Are you not seeing what's happening?" And then it, it, it now felt like it was my decision to want to go out. But over time, I realized it wasn't my decision. I was being influenced, and it wasn't something I wanted to do. There was just a lot of pressure to do it, right? That said, the book focuses on that pressure. Everything that would pressure you to go into something just because, without knowing your why, you know, especially in technology. So I broke down every area of tech that seems to be hitting the market right now. And if you think you're confused about it or and you don't understand enough, what I did was to try to demystify those things so you can really understand what they are. And I feel like when you understand them, it would help with the fear. So when you're worried, oh my goodness, I don't know much about NFTs. I need to know it if I must succeed. The moment you find out and you realize, I don't really care about this, the fear will go and you can calm down, you know, and you can go look for something you really care about. So that's what my book is about. It's trying to help you understand in simple terms what those big tech things are really about and, you know, help you connect yourself to them if it really matters to you so you can discover your why, why you're obsessed with them and help you through these things of, you know, discovery. Yeah, so that's what something overrated is about. It's saying a lot of listeners are they are far more overrated than you think. Mm, absolutely wonderful. I was supposed to ask you for a last word, but that seems to be more than enough. But my last question would now be instead of asking for your last word, I would actually want to look at what's happening in the crypto space because we can't talk about tech, tech, tech and leave the crypto news. You talked about layoffs. Layoff happened also, and of course there was a big news in the crypto trading world. What do you think about that and what would be your advice to traders and people who are involved or not involved in it? 
So there are two sides to the spectrum. People who invested and lost are crying. People who didn't invest are like, you see, I don't know if you're going to fall down. Thank God I didn't invest. It's a good Nigerian <laughs> mindset. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, what the people who invested in, like people who invested a long time ago, people who almost crying, what some of them have forgotten is they became millionaires thanks to that stuff. Some of them are still millionaires thanks to that stuff. They are not as rich as they used to be when it crashed, but they are still millionaires, so they forgot and they started crying publicly. The ones who invest forget that if they had done it earlier, they would probably be doing very well financially. And, you know, if they had got to the to tell them pull out, they probably would have pulled out on time as well, right? So that's the side of the spectrum. What, what I think I can say about it is, it's just like every other thing when it comes to investment. It's human dependent. As mm-hmm. much as crypto, crypto and the technology seem to be, it is, it is revolutionary, it is new in a way. You know, it is phenomenal as to what it can do. And I will tell you this from a very honest standpoint. It mm-hmm. is the future, whether we like it or not. Like it's, it might look like it's dying now, but it really isn't. It's going gonna, it's gonna to overwhelm everything. Because soon it will be so, even if they find a way to centralize how it works, in the end, it's going to really be how we handle transactions. It's going to be how we handle media, right? So it's, it's yet to stay. That, that's a sentence. However, don't, don't do it just because, you know, there's a craze about it. And don't get depressed because it's a downtime. Everything has its downtime mm. and it will pick up. And I know people who have lost stuff and it can be very painful. And I sympathize with you. But look at it that this is not the first time it crashed. It crashed before and it was worse than this, you know. And now that it has happened, we're seeing big tech, Web3 tech companies falling down, losing money. But when when it gets stable again, it's, it's all human dependence, you know. When it gets stable again, when people begin to utilize the technology as they should, it will grow again and that will change the market. So just look at it from that side, that just like every other form of investment, it is human dependence. Crypto, NFT, the entire Web3 and all of the technology around it is very dependent on people, very dependent on community. And as many people as continue to believe in it, the more its chances that it will try. I was supposed to say that was my last question, but this conversation do- just drove my mind to something that is currently about to happen in Nigeria, which is the change of power and, of course, the new leadership coming into position. In about a few weeks, we'll definitely be exercising our votes and electing a new president. I want to ask you, how involved are you in this process? I am very involved <laughs> because it matters. Mm-hmm. It matters. A couple of years ago, a policy was made that actually was part of what kicked my company out of business, right? At that time, I didn't care. And I realized that somebody can just sit down, know nothing about the tech, and just wake up and say, this is what I want as a policy, right? Mm. And it broke a lot of us. So now, knowing that, like, as much as I think it doesn't affect me because I'm in the grassroots, those policies affect everything around me. You know, they affect housing. They affect the ability to be mobile. They affect security, you know. So I am very involved. I would I would say to everyone, go get your PVC. Do what you can to get your PVC. Vote what you want for the future of Nigeria. So as much as I have my personal opinion, my personal preference and who I am supporting, I think it's with bias or it will create a bias for me to tell you go vote XYZ person because you want to change stuff. I would say, look at where Nigeria is today. Look at what you want it to be. Look at all the available people and ask yourself, which of these people can help us get there? You know, understanding that the future of your children is at stake. And for people who say, I don't care, I will just leave. I've asked myself, can you actually move every member of your family? Like your father, your mother, your uncles, your sisters, your in-laws. Can you move every single person? If you would have one person here that could be impacted by that decision, then you want to be a part of it. You know? So go get your privacy and vote your future. Yes, you said that right. Thank you so much for your time with me on Cruise Control. I absolutely enjoyed this conversation with you. Are there social media handles for people to connect with you? Maybe the listeners, they want to extend the conversation. And those who are also uh, probably battling some certain challenges in the tech ecosystem and they're looking for people that have gone through a similar situation that they could talk to. You sound like someone that will be able to share a, a cup of knowledge with people. So where can they, you know, link up? I am always happy to connect. Everyone mm-hmm. and anyone can reach out to me on Instagram and LinkedIn, Scott C-N-A-J, S-C-O-W-C-C-E-N-E-J-E, Scott C-N-A-J, 
on Instagram or LinkedIn or my website, scottcnj.com. I, I have a lot of information I keep putting out there. So you can also subscribe to my newsletter to get a lot of things I talk about here. I, I often send out as emails. Yeah. So you can reach out to me through any of this platform. I enjoy to connect. I enjoy talking as you can see. <laughs> it was fun chatting so, with you. <laughs> cool. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. On that note, we've come to the end of today's conversation with Mr. Scott. And I'd like to go play some music right now. So I'd want to ask you, what song would you like to listen to? Wow. That, that, that hit me. <laughs> okay. So... I, I enjoy listening to new song Maverick City so I, and uh, King and Country. So yeah, I'll choose King and Country and I would choose God is With Us. Wow, Christian song. I like that. I know, right? <laughs> so I'll try to get I in your like song. Cool. Are there any other African songs you listen to? Because we have this thing called Afro Shuffle where we allow our guests just tell us their songs that they are feeling from anywhere in the continent, basically. Yeah, okay. So I've been vibing to my friend's song, Phil's. Um, shout out to Phil's. Um, and I, I, I love what he did with the video on with Electricity. I also electricity. love Phil's and Emptiness. Vibe on it, yeah, Frequency. Also, yeah, That's also my jam. <laughs> yeah. So like, Phil's, Phil's is just our guy, you know. So <laughs> I think I will vibe to that. <laughs> mm. So I'll be getting that first. Then uh, after that, because that is easy to pick from my my music log so i'll play the electricity feels and david all and of course i'll definitely get you the other song the christian song <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much they, for your they, time just cool inspirational songs thank you thank you for having me and thank you for playing my song all right my electricity vibes on a frequency yeah. till infinity steady on a different beat Life is not that deep. It's all about the energy, yeah. The mentality. I ain't making my body. Nobody go go sign. And you know everything I do is nobody else can sign. Ah, yeah, yeah. you go come online. And I see darkness all around me, but I know I'm the light. I know I'm the light. Ah, yeah, yeah. Shake, shake, shake. Thanks for listening and don't forget to catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com.